Alexander Kovalenko, Ukrainian military and political analyst with the Information Resistance Group, says that in the Kursk region, Ukraine's forces have expanded control, matching Russian advances. As for the situation in the Kursk region, we do not know what it is in reality because the information we have is mostly from Russian propaganda. And no one knows what is happening on the part of the Ukrainian Defense Forces. The impression is that the Russians are making some advances in the direction of Opanosovka, Snagost, Lubimovka, which is a maneuverable defense. As for what is happening in the direction of the Glushkovsky district or in the north of the Koronevsky district, on the road to Lgov, no one is talking about it. However, I think we will find out this week. Because the Ukrainian defense forces have the same expansion of the zone of control as the Russian occupiers have some advances within their phenomenal counter-offensive, noted the military and political observer of the information resistance group on Espresso TV. According to him, if this Russian counter-offensive had had the appropriate efficiency, then control over the overall situation in the Kursk region would not have been transferred from Dumin, Secretary of the State Council of the Russian Federation, to Botnikov, Director of the FSB of the Russian Federation. Even Dumin failed to live up to the expectations that the Kremlin war criminal had for him. We are now on September the 30th. Another week and it will be the second month of the Kursk operation. On August the 6th, the Russian group in the Kursk region had a strength of just under 10,000 personnel. Now the Kursk group has more than 41,000 personnel. During this period, the Russians suffered losses of somewhere over 10,000 and this is not according to our data but from Russian publics. That is, over these two months, 50,000 personnel of the Russian forces were involved in the Kursk region alone, Alexander Kovalenko summarized. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said earlier that his forces controlled 100 settlements in the Kursk region over an area of more than 1,300 square kilometers. Russian sources disputed this figure and Russia says it has since taken back some villages in the counter-attack. President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko has announced the country's red lines and threatened to use nuclear weapons if Belarus or Russia is attacked by NATO. Lukashenko thanked Russian leader Vladimir Putin for confirming the use of nuclear weapons in such a situation. If NATO attacks us, we will use nuclear weapons and Russia will support us, he stated. He mentioned that Americans and Poles are gathering along the border, especially with Poland. We know that the Polish leadership is already rubbing their hands in anticipation, he stated. Lukashenko stressed that the state border of Belarus is a red line. If we use nuclear weapons, we may be retaliated against, Russia in particular. Therefore, Russia will use its full arsenal and this could lead to a world war. The West doesn't want that and it isn't ready for it. But we are clear, the red line is the state border. If they cross it, our response will be immediate. We are preparing for this, he said. Besides, Belarusian companies may be linked to sanctioned Iranian arms manufacturing companies. Inform Napalm reported the information citing the activist group cyber.anarchy.squad. Volunteer analysts managed to obtain 700 gigabytes of data from the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and related legal entities. An initial analysis of these materials suggests potential collaboration between Belarusian companies and Iranian enterprises that have been sanctioned specifically in connection with the production of weapons from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, according to the statement. In May, the Belarusian concern Belneftekim participated in the Iran Oil Show International Exhibition where several agreements were established between Belarusian and Iranian companies. Notably, Steklovo Lokno signed a memorandum with Iranian counterparts to supply silica materials valued at 200,000 euros. This fiber is believed to have potential military applications. Interestingly, there are no official mentions of the Iranian side represented by composite albors available online. Analysts speculate that the name may have been intentionally altered in the documents to obscure illegal activities. There is a strong possibility that Belarusian companies are actually collaborating with Albor's organic materials engineering company, which was recently sanctioned by the US. Albor's organic materials engineering company is accused of supplying strategic materials used in the production of missiles and drones for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. 
Volunteer analysts stress that there is reason to believe the Belarusian company is supplying silica materials to this specific firm, which is part of a network of suppliers to the Iranian military industry. If our suspicions are confirmed, Belarusian petrochemical companies are providing materials to the Iranian military sector, which manufactures missiles and drones. Iran, in turn, transfers these weapons to Russia, which employs them to attack Ukraine. This information leak underscores the critical need for international monitoring and control over the supply of strategic materials, the article states. Small NATO members who dream about attacking Russia should know Article 5 is not effective against tactical nuclear weapons, the deputy head of the Russian Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, has said. The former Russian president and prime minister was commenting on recent statements by Estonia's top general about preemptive strikes on Russia in the service of NATO objectives. The sillier the state, the greater the arrogance of its individual insane leaders. Medvedev told people should take into account only one thing. Should Russia use, say, tactical nuclear weapons against a state that allows itself such statements, nothing but a stain will remain. Sure, Article 5 of the Washington Treaty may apply, but the state will no longer exist. Medvedev added, referring to NATO's famous mutual defense provision. Medvedev spoke at the Kapustin Yar missile range in Astrakhan region, the site where the Russian Air Force tests cutting-edge rocket technology. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin unveiled changes to Moscow's nuclear doctrine at a meeting of the nation's Security Council with Medvedev in attendance. Widely regarded as a message to the US and its allies, as well as Ukraine, the updated doctrine would allow Russia to deploy its nuclear deterrent in case of a conventional attack by a state that is backed by a nuclear power. The head of the Estonian general staff, Major General Vahua Karus, said last week that new NATO contingency plans for a conflict with Moscow envisioned the Baltic state launching a strike across the border. Our long-range strike capabilities are fully taken into account in NATO plans, and NATO tells us that we have to take care of certain targets in Russia, and that's when they can come to Estonia and take the next steps. Karus told the Estonian state broadcaster ERR. Karus described the new mission as a fundamental change to Estonia's military doctrine, noting that prior to the Ukraine conflict, the US-led bloc expected the Baltic state to hold out for about 10 days before it could get NATO reinforcements. Estonia joined the organization in 2004 and has been one of the most vocal supporters of Ukraine in the conflict with Russia.